Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 commentary with EXO and today I'm going to be bringing you a game between Liquid Yellow spawning as the Red Terran at the 7 o'clock position and Night End spawning as the Blue Protoss at the 2 o'clock position. Now, Tilo has been playing, has been playing as random uh, lately on the ladder and uh, looks like he's going to be... he's a little bit unsure about what he wants to play really in competitive gameplay tournaments and stuff like that so he's playing random to obviously get a, a better feel for all the races and by the way this is game two the, the, I've cast another game before this one on Metalopolis between Tilo and Night and two ladder matches by the way uh, thanks to Night and again for providing the replays and um these are going to be uh, two straight up ladder matches, not a tournament game, not a show match, nothing whatsoever, just uh, those ladder games that people don't really get to see so much because ladder games are, um, well, ladder is very straight up and it can be very brutal and a lot of players can lose to very unexpected things and it's why we can see, it, it's, it's because of this that uh, StarCraft 2 is really a non-linear game and um, StarCraft 2 just uh, offers a little bit um, more aggressive gameplay than StarCraft 1, I believe, especially in the beginning of the game. A lot of uh, cheeses, a lot of uh, all-ins, a lot of early game rushes in this game from all races, really. So, um, yeah, StarCraft 2 is a little bit different than StarCraft 1 in that department. But it looks like Tilo is spawning his turn right now. He's going for a pretty much early gas, a barracks as well. So let's see, is he gonna go for a second early gas as well? He might just go for Banshees, I'm not exactly sure. Looking at Night End though, he's going for a pretty much standard opening right here. Um, getting the gas and the gateway and the pylon. Probably gonna see a Cybernetic score just as soon, uh, just as, um, as, soon as that uh, uh, that gateway finishes so it looks like Tilo is opening pretty much standard for Terran he's getting the uh, fast orbital command on 15 or 16 not sure exactly what it was I think 15 um, and um, getting the first marine out this one and this one is really here for uh, for the purpose of denying scouting mainly. Get one or two marines, place them at the ramp over here so the probes cannot get inside your base. Looks like TLO is gonna try some sort of bunker rush over here. This is interesting, so let's see if TLO is actually gonna commit to this. But uh, the SCV, I don't think the SCV is gonna get to finish that bunker and the Night End taking five probes off the line, attacking the bunker right now. TLO has rallied some of these marines to a Night End's base and whoa, well, Night End actually took the probes off. Let's see. Is TLO gonna finish that bunker? Really? Let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen. One Zealot over here. He's microing his marine around, trying to actually keep it alive, and he needs to stay alive a long time before this Zealot is gonna get taken. Now let's see. The Zealot is 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 is, is it gonna get take? Uh, is it gonna take out these marines? No, it doesn't look like it. A lot more probes being taken off the line for Night End, and um, looks like uh, TLO did cancel that bunker. He's just gonna keep this SCV inside for some scouting purposes and a miss rally point. This uh, this marine making its way inside uh, Night End's base for no real purpose, dying over there. The SCV getting taken out as well, and looks like that um, that push over there, that early game pressure from TLO didn't really pay off. Looks like he's getting two Marauders right now. Is he gonna get concussive shields? I'm curious to see if he's gonna get this. He's getting a pretty fast early gas. Is he gonna go for any Banshees? This is gonna be interesting. Let's see. Looks like Night End is pushing across with one Stalker and one Zealot. So let's see. Oops, gotta be careful with that Stalker. He doesn't want to lose the Stalker. And he's going for a starport as well, so 1-1-1 one, one, one opening for a TLO, and um, is he actually going to go for Banshees? I'm not exactly sure, let's see. Looking at Night End's base though, looks like Night End is going to go for a solid warp kit push right now. Two warp kits being added on, and we might just see a third one as well. And this might just uh, break TLO, because TLO isn't really sitting on a... He doesn't have a lot of unit produ production right now, he doesn't have a lot of unit producing structures. He just has a barracks and uh, he's switching these around. Let's see, is he gonna land the starport onto this and the barracks onto the... No, he's actually leaving the starport alone. He's just gonna get a uh, medevac off this. Gonna get a lot of marines off the barracks and the factory is gonna get a siege tank out and <clears throat> he doesn't have gas for siege mode yet, but he's gonna have it soon. He does have the double gas and looks like well, Night End really likes this. I, I'm, I don't want to spoil. By the way, okay, here's a spoiler incoming. So, if you haven't seen the previous game, then do watch it. But Night End looks like he really wants to proxy these uh, these structures 
and have a maximum efficiency of them. He's actually proxying a uh, Stargate over here, Chrono boosting a, a Void Ray out. In the previous game, he did um, build a Dark Templar, uh, a Dark Shrine in a remote position of the map that Yellow didn't uh, really scout. It's really unlikely to have uh, to have a scout in that position, so Nyden actually managed to get some Dark Templar without TLO knowing in the previous game, so I invite you to check that game out as well, by the way, if you did listen to the spoiler. And yeah, that's pretty much how um, how um, ladder goes. It's just so unpredictable, and sometimes things happen, and you lose the game, and you sit around asking yourself, what did I do wrong? And you have to watch the replay to actually figure out what happened that you did wrong. So, looks like Knight and Is are gonna wait for two Void Rays to come out of this Stargate. He's not gonna attack with this one. And Tilo is, um... Tilo is? Tilo is? He has, he has quite a few Marines. So he should be fine, technically. Uh, versus these Void Rays. But, um... <clears throat> I think uh, Knight and is going to try... Uh, two prone attack. He's, he might just push the ramp over here with his ground forces and take the Void Rays. Um, from this different uh, angle to attack TLO space now um, This is looking really interesting. Obviously uh, night end hasn't expanded while TLO has already put down his command center and is uh, uh, Morphing it into a uh, orbital command so night end is really late with this expansion over here So if this fails for night end, I don't really see um, a way for him to be uh, taking this game macro wise because he's going to be really far behind TLO. TLO already landing his command center over here. Knight and does scout this out with this observer. And looks like TLO is going to be landing this orbital command and is going to start mining off two bases. Knight and has three void rays that TLO has absolutely no idea about. TLO has this medevac on this side, but it is empty. It's more of a scouting medevac, and that's really weird. <laughs> because I don't really haven't really seen this kind of uh, play from TLO scouting with the medevac. There we go, fourth void ray, and he uh, TLO does have quite a lot of marines. But if these marines get focused down by the ground units and the void rays, the void rays are actually going to take down everything else quite easily. So let's see what's going to happen over here. And Naiden needs to make a push right now because the void rays have been scouted over there. And let's see, oops, some some tanks. Oh, and uh, Knight and very nice getting the charge up on these rocks. There we go, full charge on two of those Void Rays, doing a lot of damage to Marines. Oh, 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 the bunker is not finished. And Tilo is actually trying really hard right now to repel this push, but these Void Rays are doing so much damage. I mean, the Stalkers are going down, but it doesn't really matter because the Void Rays are doing all the damage that they need to do, and the turret is going to get taken out. There we go, just firing one missile. So one turret getting taken out, and TLO just GG's the game, and wow, what a straight up victory from Nightend over here. Seems like Nightend is really one of those players that likes to hide tech buildings uh, around the map so that the enemy cannot really scout them in a timely fashion. And it really just won him the game, he had three Void Rays, and these Void Rays have been doing uh, insane damage, and the Marines, after the Marines got taken out, there's really nothing you can do, because... Um, Getting one Marine out at a time is not really going to save you against three Void Rays. Three Void Rays is a bit too much to handle with just a few Marines. So, yeah, really straight up, straightforward game. Um, this is what happens on ladder, by the way, guys. And, uh, yeah, especially in high-level play, you're going to lose some games sometimes without having any idea. Like, wow, this just crushed me. Sometimes you get these crushing defeats no matter how good you are. Because sometimes, I mean, this is what's great about StarCraft. It's the fact that it's not a linear game, it's the fact that sometimes you're gonna get these kinds of builds and you have no way of knowing and preparing for them and it just pushes you to become better and better and to try and um, cover so many more things that you think you're missing like scouting, like uh, uh, macroing up and stuff like this. Obviously TLO was going uh, doing a good game, he did get his second expansion while uh, well, he did lift this off, but uh, actually, four Void Rays, by the way, for Night, and that Void Ray was on this side. And, um, yeah, TLO just played a, a straight up game, really. And uh, I, I'd really say that Night End was a little bit more creative than TLO in this game. It looks like Night End um, just exploited um, the fact that TLO could not scout this target over here and just won the game. So, yeah, two very good players playing. Um, 
a ladder game and this is what happens so anyway i hope you enjoyed this i hope you've watched the previous game as well so um yeah i sometimes don't want to ca cast just those amazing games i mean obviously you've seen a lot of well let's say amazing games for me lately between Drew I mean with Drewby and Kiwi Kaki and QXC and stuff like that but sometimes I like to also cast these games on ladder where you just have this stuff happening um, and there's it's just straightforward you just lose the game and look at look at time over here 11 game and it's so you just lost the game to void rays and um, I mean unscouted void rays so yeah it happens a lot and uh, there's I think this uh, there's a lot for people to learn from these games Okay, that's it for me right now. I'm going to be going to bed after I uh, process and upload these videos. So I hope you've enjoyed these. And um, yeah, uh, go check out my channel. By the way, if you're not a, one of my subscribers, youtube.com slash exostarcraft. And uh, subscribe if you like what you see so you can get updated by more content that I upload. And uh, yeah, that's it. As for my subscribers, thanks guys for uh, tuning in, for offering uh, input and suggestions and uh, really supporting me. I, I love you guys. It's it's really great to see that there's people enjoying my cast and that are tuning in frequently to what, I, uh, to what I upload. Anyway, that's it for me right now. Signing out and I'll see you guys probably tomorrow um, with more casts. Stay tuned for more videos.